Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. My name is Jess, and today I am going to be talking to you guys a little bit about the planting options here in the small garden that we're building right outside our house. So, we just moved here from Arkansas to South Carolina. We're starting over fresh, building a farm from scratch. I love to grow stuff. I find so much joy in the garden. And this year, I actually did plant my garden back in Arkansas, knowing that we were going to be selling that house to my dear friend Jill, who's also a gardener. And uh, I still planted it largely for Jill to have something to move into and have a garden when she got there, but also largely for myself to have a garden to work on. Uh, but there has been this period here for the last couple of months where I just haven't had a garden. And it's been a very strange feeling for me. I've bought quite a few house plants, but um, I am setting up this small garden here, just a kitchen garden here by my house to grow some winter crops through this fall and winter to kind of tide me over as we break ground on our big garden, which is where we will produce the majority of our food. Well, I knew when we moved here that I was going to be doing something like this, and I thought I would take this as an opportunity to create content for you guys that would probably be maybe even more applicable to some of you than my content has been in the past because this s scale of garden that I'm building here um, right outside the front of my house is what a lot of you guys are going to be building where you live in neighborhoods where maybe you're growing for just a couple of people you're just getting your feet wet and gardening and doing something on this small scale is totally valid I say all the time turn your waiting room into a classroom and my husband hope in planting this garden here on this scale is to be able to show you guys what can actually be done um, in a more manageable space, like a more realistic space for a small uh, neighborhood garden. So here we have my garden space. I'll tell you a little bit about the choices that we've made here. Uh, I laid down cardboard here and put mulch down. Just This is like the free mulch that you can get at municipalities. They're essentially wood chips and uh, green mulch that's broken down. That's not necessary you know, to have a garden space, but I didn't want to have to do a lot of weed eating around here. And we had the ability to spread that out. And being that this is free material and the cardboard was what we had from moving, it didn't cost any extra to do it. And that will alleviate a lot of the work by cutting down on weed trimming. Now I have a couple of different options here that I've put in this garden. We're about to put this last bed together today. Now I've shared in depth with you guys before about my green sulks, which are these tower gardens back here in the corner. Uh, they're a really good option for small footprint growing. Um, they are container gardening, so you're going to be more vigilant with fertilizing in something like this uh, because it's just less soil that the plants have access to. But I really do like the green stalks. I've grown a lot of food in those. I've got one of these planted with lettuce greens, and I've got some other started plants and seeds I'm going to put in the other ones. So these beds here, these uh, wooden raised beds, I've got a shorter one here and a longer one down on that end. Um, these are actually from Amazon and I just threw them on my Amazon wish list. Sometimes I will put different gardening products that I want to try for the sake of content creation um, on there and it's a way that people can kind of like help me make content by buying stuff off that list. I get linked and asked all the time, people will send me links for different products like this. And they'll say, hey, are these good? Are these worth it? And the truth is, I have no idea. And because in the situation that I'm in, my husband's really good at building stuff. And I, Jeremiah has always just built our garden beds from scratch. We usually use reclaimed materials and just do it as cheaply as possible. So a lot of these pre-made kits, I've never had any reason to try them. But here in this garden, I thought this would be a great time for me to try try stuff like this to be able to give you guys the feedback because you might not be in a situation where you have access to a person that can build you stuff and so you might be looking at products like this as a necessity and I wanted to tell you where best to spend your money. I got them in the mail and opened them up and looked at them and realized very quickly that the assembly of those was not going to be super simple. So I actually still did have to call on Jeremiah for some help on that. I can put things together. <laughs> I'm not completely helpless. I can put together uh, things that have instructions. I can build like simple furniture that comes and needs assembly. But if it has a whole lot of pieces or if the instructions are not super clear, 
Um, a lot of times I'll just leave it to him because I might make a mess of it trying to put it together. So Maya and our friend Wes actually put those together and they did require some improvising. Like they ended up having to drill some extra holes. They ended up having to pull in some power tools rather than the little tool set that came with that. So while I don't know how they're going to hold up, I don't know how they're going to do in the long run, I'm still looking forward to planting them. They're beautiful. I will tell you, if you are... Eh, constructionally challenged, <laughs> we'll just call it that. <laughs> totally made that word up. Um, I don't know that that's really the best solution for you. However, um, these two beds, these are from Vigo Garden Bed, and that is the green bed there and the one that's still in the box. It's super bright out here in the middle of the day, so I'm gonna come over here. My friend Matthew found this company I think he bought his first one last year. Might have been the beginning. I can't remember. But my friend Matthew found the company Vigo Garden Bed. And he bought one of these beds and put it together. Really liked it. Ended up ordering another one. And around that time, I knew we were going to be moving here. And I knew I was going to be without a garden this fall. And I'd had the plans to use my green stalks. But I decided... I'm going to get a couple of these beds because I know that I can throw them together easily myself while Maya has a super long to-do list and I'll be able to get some stuff growing this fall. At the time, one thing that I hadn't really considered, this was like the beginning of the spring, and this was about when materials, I mean they'd already spiked a lot, but they were continuing to go through the roof. And it I was thinking, well, I'm going to go ahead and invest in these. They may cost more. And as it turned out, I'm not 100% sure that they did. And when I got them here, I actually put this one together and really liked it a lot, especially considering the fact that lumber is so expensive. I think this is a really valid option for people who are trying to garden on a smaller scale in their yard. And the thing that I can say right now is that I actually did put this bed together on my own. Um, this was not one that I had to require any extra tools other than the little thing that came with it. Um, it came with this, I guess, what did I see? This is how challenged I am. I don't even know, socket thing. <laughs> Um, but basically, I was able to put this together. It did take me a little while. Uh, once I got into the groove of it, I got it done a lot faster. But as I was kind of figuring out how it all went, it probably took me about an hour to put this whole thing together. But I was pretty proud of being able to do it myself. It's super sturdy. It's got these little tensioner rods that give it extra support so you can fill it with soil and it not sag. And I think it's going to last a long time being... Uh, coated metal. I have this other box here. It's kind of falling apart because it's been rained on, but I wanted to show you guys what this looks like, how it comes, and kind of give you my opinion on it because I really like this product. When I purchased these, um, they were a little back ordered, which this was a while ago. They're not back ordered now, I don't think. But when I went on their website, they were back ordered because this was kind of like back in the late spring, early summer. And I was able to get a discount on these as a pre-order and they weren't going to ship until like later and I was going to be moving. I didn't need them until I moved here. But since then, I signed up for their email list and they've done a few sales where you can get discounts. And after I put this one together and liked it so much, I actually contacted the company about getting an affiliate link. I will put that information down below if you decide that you want to check these out. You got all of these metal pieces fit together in this box. Here are the rods. This is the little edging that goes around the top here to keep it from cutting you. Which, as I was putting it together, I was mindful of the deal fact that I was, you know, dealing with metal. But it's not a raw edge, so it's not like super dangerous or anything. But definitely is good to have that little extra protection and to be mindful when you're putting something together like this, not to slice your hand open. And then down in here is the hardware, all of the little bolts and stuff that hold this together. The coolest thing, though, that I like about the Vigo beds, I like that they're metal. I like that they're going to hold up for a long time. You don't have to worry about rotting. But I thought it was really neat that this bed, I got the 10 in 1 modular beds. That's the largest size. And I did the 17 inch ones. They make ones that are taller, so you don't have to bend over. But it comes with 
this little thing on the instruction manual that shows how you can use the different panels to make this bed all different shapes and sizes. Now some of these configurations, you're not using all 12 pieces that come with it, therefore you're getting less planting space. Um, I chose to do the eight by four foot configuration. Uh, that to me is just a really versatile size garden bed. And I'll show you guys later how I'm gonna plant these out to make the most out of the space. But they have, but they have like different ways you can figure it. Like you can make the same exact kit into like a nine and a half by two and a half foot bed or a seven and a half by four and a half foot bed. You can do it in like a big six by six square if you wanted to. So you could definitely do some really neat things with garden configuration. I'm just gonna do the two four by eights next to each other, do a cattle panel arch in between them. Uh, but I am actually planning on incorporating some of these beds into my raised bed potager garden in the garden belt, which is gonna be just like a really artistic, eclectic garden. Um, not all of the beds in there will be metal, but I wanna do some because I wanna do all kinds of stuff in there. It's really neat. So we're actually just gonna put this together right now. It is very bright and very hot outside. So I'm not gonna time lapse this or anything because it might take us a little while throughout this afternoon. However, I am gonna link Matthew's videos as well. Um, he has a couple of videos about putting these together as well as planting them and kind of his opinion on them. Uh, just so if you are a researcher like I am, you can have some more content to dig into it. And I will be back when we have this other one set up, we're gonna put some soil in them. All right, so we have our second bed put together. I had Wes here helping me, and he definitely made this a faster job. I did the first bed by myself, and having two people putting the panels together, it was nice. <laughs> so these beds are 17 inches deep, and if you look here, you can see we, we put about six inches of these wood, this wood mulch. Um, it's fairly broken down in some areas. You can see here that it's getting pretty close to being soil, but obviously some big chunks and stuff. So one of the things that you run into when you start raised bed gardening is that the most expensive part of raised bed gardening is typically gonna be your soil. And one thing that you can do to offset those costs, especially if you're doing raised beds that, for instance, like these beds are 17 inches deep, you don't need 17 inches of good soil to grow a garden. I would say for most things that I'm about to plant in the fall, like eight inches is sufficient, um, maybe even six. So you could do all of the cabbages and the kales, um, the sweet shelling peas or snap peas, sugar peas, whatever you call them. Um, any of that stuff will do fine without a deep bed of soil. So in the case of these beds, by putting six to eight inches of that semi broken down mulch on the bottom, that is a significant amount of filling that I don't have to spend in soil because that mulch was free and soil is expensive. Another thing you can do is just grab up like lawn and uh, clippings from your yard. Like if you've got branches, if you have leaves, um, if you have grass clippings, anything like that, and pile that up in the bottom of your beds. And then the top six to eight inches, you know, maybe 10 in the summer garden where you're gonna be planting deeper rooted things like tomato plants. Um, but even still, like I've used cruddy soil on the bottom just like basic topsoil that might even have pretty heavy clay or sand content. And then with six to eight inches of good soil or compost on top, um, eventually that bottom soil, it becomes good soil. Eventually that broken down mulch that I put in the bottom of these beds will become good soil. The main thing is, is if you're gonna do some sort of filler like that that's not broken down, uh, that's gonna leach nitrogen. Like if you've got unbroken down wood chips, yard clippings, anything like that, those will suck the nitrogen in from the plants around them as they break down. As they break down, they release nitrogen into the soil around them. So you don't wanna mix that in with your soil. You definitely wanna do a layer. And so by filling the bottom here, I don't have to worry about that leaching so much. It might leach a little bit out of the very bottom of that soil, but it's not gonna pull so much that it damages my garden. And the benefit of doing that, not only does it save money, but also that mulch is gonna hold more water than the soil is. So when it rains or when I water my garden, I'm gonna have this nice kind of diaper underneath that is, that is holding moisture that the plants can uh, suck up after the top of the soil is kind of starting to dry out. So it's definitely a good idea to do that. Now the first thing I'm gonna do when I get new garden beds full of soil is water them down really good. One, 
that settles the soil down. And if I decide at that point, then I need to add more soil. I'd just rather discover that when I'm kind of like in soil moving mode. What I don't want to do is wait a couple of days and then let a really heavy rain come in and then realize that I probably need a couple more inches of soil than I thought and then have to like revisit that chore. I'd rather just get it right the first time. The other thing is, is I always prefer planting in wet soil rather than dry soil because if I water this and let it drain and then put seeds in the ground, I don't have to water it again with the seeds in the ground. If they'll be able to grow. And then I don't have to worry about displacing my seeds. Um, you can find these online soil calculators if you just type in like raised bed soil calculator and it'll have like a form that you can put the dimensions of your bed in and it'll tell you how many cubic feet or how many cubic yards of soil you need to fill that. When you're filling your beds up, it is so tempting because it's easy to miscalculate your soil. It's easy to underestimate how much it's gonna cost. And when you go to fill them up, um, you know, if you fill them like, let's say halfway up, that might be enough soil to actually grow in. And there's actually nothing wrong with doing that if you wanna add more soil as the years go by or whatever as the seasons go by. Uh, the only thing is, is when you've got like a real deep space between the top of your raised bed and well, the, where the soil starts, is you're gonna run into um, that casting a shadow in some cases. So you need to be aware of how much sunlight it's getting. If you plant really close to the edge and you have that deep lip, it may shade your plants. They might get leggy trying to get up past the edge of that to the sun, depending on how much light they're getting. Um, and the other thing that you may run into, and I've done it. I, the first year we did our raised bed garden, we just simply could not afford to fill the beds with soil. I left probably a six inch lip and it was fine. Everything that I put in them grew. Um, there were a couple plants that struggled along the edge because of the light. And the only other thing that you might run into is like if you're watering or rain, just having that other surface next to them that there could be splashback of water might, might bring disease and stuff. But um, I mean, it's not a massive issue. There's no reason why you have to fill your beds all the way to the top. The only benefit of that is getting more even lighting, getting more even watering, and you have to bend over less or not as far. And that's kind of the benefit of raised beds is not having to bend over as far. We went a little fuller on that one, but that was just like a misestimation. I would have done both of them like this because I'm gonna mulch. And so I don't like it to be flush with the top of the bed because I want a lip to hold my mulch in uh, once I get these planted. Now, I did want to point out one thing in putting these beds together. Just a tip if you do decide to get some of these beds, which I really like them, but they're very simple to put together though a little fiddly like i mean this is just a lot of of pieces to put together they're lightweight though i would highly suggest like we actually sat on the front porch and put these together sitting in those chairs and on the steps because if you are doing this in the bright sun and you set these metal pieces down for just i mean a few minutes in the sun they're almost too hot to touch so setting these up in a comfortable seated position rather than like squatting on the ground or bent over on the ground and then just doing the ends and then the sides and then bring them out and putting them together is 100% the way to go. The other thing is, um, this may be in the instructions and I just missed it, but I did uh, mess up on this the first time and it had to be fixed. But um, the side panels like this one is two long pieces and one short piece and you have to match the pattern. Even though it's the same distance, like you could do long, long, short, and long, short, long, uh, you wanna match the pattern on both sides so those support beams line up, those support rods. Um, and I had it wrong, and so we had to redo it on this one, but we got it right on the other one. So those are my only two things, putting these together. Otherwise, they seem really easy. And I'm hoping, once it cools off, I'm gonna go inside and uh, spend some time with my kids, but I'm hoping once it cools off this evening, I can get out here and plant all of these up. So I'm really excited about this little garden by the house. Um, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and tell me that it's encouraging to them to see 
somebody on YouTube, a homesteader on YouTube, because there are so many channels that you can watch and people growing a lot of food. But you kind of miss the opportunity to see me or, you know, people that are doing what I'm doing as far as YouTube goes, grow on this scale. And obviously, I mean, like we're planning a bigger garden, but I wasn't making YouTube videos when my garden was this size. And it was at one point. Um, the first really successful garden I had was two four by four raised beds right outside my door. Very similar to this. And the amount of food you can grow in a small space like this, it really is astounding. And I feel like a lot of times people will talk themselves out of doing this step because they want a five acre homestead or they want to be canning and preserving and growing all of their family's food or half their family's. They don't want to be dependent on the grocery store anymore. But this stage, is very, very important in that journey. Taking the time to learn how plants grow, you can learn so much in a space like this. This is a fantastic classroom. And maybe it's not just a classroom. I mean, this is a valid garden size for anybody that's hoping to grow food in their yard. It doesn't have to be a stepping stone to complete food sustainability. You really can offset a pretty significant amount of your grocery bill during the, the growing season um, and year round in places that have mild winters with a space this size. And I know that I am kind of a hopeless romantic and I know that I am like, the eternal optimist <laughs> when people say is the glass half full or is it half empty i'm like honey it's halfway to overflowing like i love to think of the best case scenario but i genuinely believe that the home garden could change the world i think that if everybody that had a desire to do so decided to take up a garden space where they are um, that it would genuinely have a very positive impact on the health of humanity and the health of our earth. So for me, it's totally worth it to model that, um, even though as a person who is gardening really as a career, having written a gardening book, having developed a gardening course and doing this YouTube channel, obviously I have a lot to benefit from doing large gardening spaces and showing different styles, but I don't ever want to forget the home garden, this size home garden, uh, with just a few raised beds, some, some vertical garden towers, some containers, uh, because this is very valid. And lastly, I really want to touch on the fact that while I will do product reviews and I will share resources and stuff like this because it is good it's good information i'm the kind of person that reads a ton of reviews and watches a ton of videos before i make purchases and that's why i like making content like this because i find it valuable and i know it's valuable to other people and truly doing things like finding a company that i'm like okay i really like this product and doing things like affiliate marketing it does help me do what i do however I always have to say when I talk about stuff, you guys know this anytime I do like my favorite gardening tools or anything like that, I always have to say you don't have to have stuff to garden. Um, I also have videos showing you how to turn a little plastic kiddie pool into a garden, how to grow salad greens in a soil bag. I will link those down below because for those of you who are in the place of turning your waiting room into a classroom, maybe you're not at the point where you're ready to invest in things like nice long lasting beds or planters or whatever. Uh, but again, you really can learn so much from a season of just getting some hands-on experience. And that's why I'm always so encouraging to tell people just, hey, get started on whatever scale is possible for you wherever you are. Because truly, um, I believe greatly in the home garden. And uh, I, I, you know, I know that it's silly to some people, but I truly, genuinely, with from the bottom of my heart, uh, believe that gardening can change the world. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.